Feedback, hisses, and hums. All of them are different and all of them are bad. Today I'm going to show you what the most common causes are for these issues so you know where to look for the problem and what to do when you find it. First off, I want to distinguish between feedback and the others. Feedback is the only one that's an actual audio issue. The rest of them point to a problem within your sound system setup. Feedback happens when a speaker puts out a sound at a particular frequency that's loud enough for a microphone to pick up. That microphone then retransmits that through your sound system back to your speaker. Your speaker puts it out again, a little bit louder this time. That cycle repeats until it's loud enough to be heard, loud enough to sound bad, and eventually loud enough to be painful, both to your ears and your pride. It is the quickest way to get noticed during church though. Really though, who hasn't been in a service where something caused feedback and all eyes are instantly on the sound booth? Feedback comes in a variety of flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. No. From low-end rumble that shakes the rafters and Sister Helen's dentures right out of her head to piercing high-frequency squeals. A feedback loop needs three basic things to survive. A transmitter, like a speaker. A receiver, like a microphone. And a resonant frequency, whether that's low-end, high-end, 850 hertz, etc. You get the idea. This makes it easy for us as sound engineers because all we need to do to stop that feedback is eliminate one of those. That's right, you're an engineer now. Wouldn't mom be proud? Mute the mic, feedback's gone. Turn down the speaker, toast. Find the right frequency like a blindfolded ninja in a high stakes game of pin the tail on the donkey, bingo. Now that last one is ultimately what we wanna work towards, but sometimes you just gotta stop it now and fix it later. Sometimes it's simple. Monitors are crazy loud on stage and getting picked up by the microphones or somebody pointed their mic directly at the monitor, easy fix. Turn down the monitors a little bit and tell your singer or speaker to please stop that. Other times it's a little bit more complicated, like an EQ issue. Here you're gonna wanna work backwards. Start by boosting one of your EQ bands in the area that you think the feedback's happening, whether it's low end or high end. Move that around in that general area, sweep it around until you find the feedback and you make it worse. Yes, worse. By making it worse, you're gonna be able to find out exactly where that feedback lives. Then you just dial back your EQ cut the offending frequency, and move on with your life because you got more important things to worry about. Hums and hisses can be related to EQ. Strictly speaking in terms of frequency, hums are low, hisses are high. Fix them accordingly with your EQ now that you know how. But what if they're not related to EQ? Hisses can be caused, and I found they're most often caused by gain staging issues. Now, I'll go deeper into this on another video, but suffice it to say, if you've got your gain knob turned all the way up to three o'clock, Turn that knob on your console down a little bit, turn it up somewhere else, and you should be good. Hum and buzz are two different terms that I use pretty interchangeably. Some people don't, but I do. Typically these are in the low end and are usually caused by a resonation issue with something like an acoustic guitar or a mic picking up vibrations from the subs or the kick drum, or it's caused by power hum. Power hum is caused by an issue with grounding, specifically a ground loop. Now what's grounding? Grounding is a term used when dealing with electricity typically shown by this symbol. Every commercial and residential building should be grounded. If you find out that yours isn't, you should immediately run screaming from that building because it's a huge safety hazard. Grounding essentially gives a place for stray power to go, whether that's from an outside surge or from a dead short in a piece of equipment that would otherwise blow up your stuff. Quick side note here. I know that this isn't a super detailed explanation, and I'm not using all the correct symbols over here in my diagrams, but I'm just trying to get the basic concept across, not teach an electronics course. The most common way we can get a ground loop is when we have two different pieces of gear connected by an unbalanced cable, which only has two conductors, a positive and a negative. We also use that negative as our ground. So when we use this unbalanced cable, we've got the audio connection that we need, but we've also inadvertently created a circuit with our ground wire linking pieces one and two, see? One of two things can happen here. Either one will have a small amount of voltage moving from piece one to piece two, or vice versa, depending on which has a better connection to the common ground. This is called ground potential difference. Or the circuit we've created with our ground wire will begin to pick up a small amount of current through the AC voltage system. Here in the US, our AC power alternates at 60 times a second, or 60 Hertz. Since that falls within our hearing range, you get this. Now I can already hear you on the other end of this video going, I know what it sounds like, I hear it every week. How do I fix it? Glad you asked. 
And thank you, by the way, for sitting through my explanation of why it happens. Let's get to the how. Your solution is simple. Break the ground loop. The dangerous and unfortunately common way to do this is to take that third prong on your power cable and just break it off. Now, I'm sure you've seen this before, and to be clear, it does work, but it's very, very dangerous. By doing this, we have eliminated our ground loop, but we've also done it on the high voltage section of our circuit, which means that whatever this is plugged into is no longer grounded. So if we have any kind of power surge, it's gonna go through the equipment, through your audio lines, to whatever else it's connected to, and electrocute someone or something. Worst case scenario, you die. And yes, using a cheater plug is the exact same thing as doing this. So please, don't ever, ever, ever remove that third prong. Seriously, don't. Instead, let's break that ground loop on our low voltage side using something like this, a direct box or a DI. It'll cancel out your 60 hertz hum and as an added bonus gives you a balanced output, which will cancel out any other noise picked up on the subsequent cable run, which is why it's always better to use balanced cables on your sound system wherever you can. Those are some of the common reasons for feedback, hisses, and hums. Now you might run into a weird one every now and then that's specific to your situation, but this should get you about 90% of the way there. This video ended up being a little bit long, so thank you for sticking it out with me till the end. As a thank you, I've got something I wanna give you. It's my free guide on how to get better sound out of your church system this week without spending any money. Just follow the link in the description below or go to weesaudio.com slash better sound today to get it. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying running sound more every week and I'll see you real soon.